Hi there, my name is Dexter and I'm a life coach. I'm answering a question posted on a forum and the question is from a highly functioning drug addict who's in the finance industry and is going to great lengths to keep their life running smoothly while dealing with a meth addiction. They're asking how can they stop and they've posed some very good questions that I'm going to answer in this video. If you'd like to see their question, or if you'd like to see the forum thread where I'm going to be posting this video, please look at the, uh, in the, in the video link description where you can find that information. Hope you enjoy the video. Hello, I'm Dexter and I'm a life coach. Congratulations on reaching out for help. I know that that's not always easy. Now, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a therapist, so it's important that you understand that none of the advice I'm giving is medical advice of any kind. It's just from my experience in my personal life and as a life coach and from my own personal studies of different healing modalities and from my work that I do helping people transcend addictions and other issues in their lives and to help them achieve their goals, of course. So that being said, one of the first things that I want to share with you is that you mention the intense and incomparable pleasure from meth use. Well, one thing that I want to say about this that could be helpful is that it's important to realize that there are other pleasures, other rewarding experiences, fulfilling experiences that are out there that can replace the, the feeling, the high, the pleasure that you get from meth use. And in fact, those experiences can actually be more rewarding and more fulfilling. They exist. It can take some effort and some focus and discipline and some time to, to learn how to have those experiences and find them. That said, they're, de they're there. And when you start to have those experiences about the use of drugs or other addictions, it, it's a very enriching and fulfilling experience on, in all parts of your being. And that's available to you. The next thing that I'd like to share is that you say, I am a meth addict. And when I work with people who are trying to work through issues, this is a, a very common thing that I find. It's that they are identifying with the behavior that they're trying to quit or transcend, which is a funny thing because if we identify with something, it actually ends up locking it into place because it literally becomes part of our identity. And that no one feels safe being someone they're not. And so if we say in one part of our systems, I am a meth addict, and simultaneously we're trying to not be a meth addict, we're trying to quit. Well, when we start to try to quit, we're literally going to feel like we're not being ourselves, which is going to create additional unnecessary resistance, which you'll feel in the form of anxiety, negative emotion, um, which could create more craving and desire to use again. So. If instead of looking at yourself as a meth addict, you look at yourself as simply a being who has many different tendencies and does many things throughout the day, and one of those things is to use meth. Well, now that perspective reflects a changeable state. Going from a meth addict to a non-meth addict is a much bigger leap than going from someone who simply does meth regularly to someone who now does something else regularly. Do you see how when you disidentify from it, you actually open up a new path for that, that'll make it easier for you to change the behavior. These things are subtle and important. They make a big difference in the long run. It's great that you're functioning. It's great that you still have your job your relationship, and your health. Like you've described, it can take a lot of determination and energy and focus to remain healthy and to remain functional, especially in a competitive environment and in, in a relationship while using. And you've done it. And that reflects a great capacity for focus and, and conscious discipline and, and self-awareness. So congratulations that capacity 
is going to help you in your process of, of quitting. In a, in a way, it's proof that you have the capacity to transcend it. You have great capacity for success. In regards to your practice of deception in disguise, when you start to feel the, the high or different emotions and, and you're able to control yourself and, and manage the way you interact so that other people can't perceive what's going on inside of you, so those skills also require focus, self-awareness, emotional management, all of which are tools that you'll be able to use when starting to transcend the addiction. Like for example, if you're starting to transcend it, you're saying, and you're choosing not to use as much or not to use at all, when you start to get a craving, you can consciously intervene. In the same way that you consciously intervene when you feel different things coming out that you don't want other people to see. So when you consciously intervene when you have a craving, you can choose to shift your attention, your focus to something else so that you're no longer thinking about the drug or the craving and you're focused back on your primary intentions, whatever those may be. Over time, with enough repetition, as you shift that, that focus and shift that focus to new things, you start forgetting the craving. You can even transcend the craving in that way so that it stops coming back and you don't feel a desire for it. And as you do shift your focus and do shift your focus, you'll be cultivating new potential for fulfillment in, in new things in your life, in new areas of your life, which will make it so you won't want to go back. You won't want to go back to the drug. You did mention concern over the dynamic where you feel elation or, or intense satisfaction from successfully controlling your behavior. Believe it or not, that feeling might be more common than you think. I've seen it before many times. That feeling of being in control can produce euphoric feelings of power and invincibility. And it's, it's normal to have those feelings when you're a functioning addict, especially a, a, a successful functioning addict. It can kind of make one feel like they're on top of the world. The irony is that when you say you lose it, the low there, when you lose it, is like, instead of being on top of the world, it's like the valley. So so when you're feeling that feeling of, of intense satisfaction from controlling your emotions and things like that while you're high in, in public or at work, that's the mountaintop. And then when you lose it, that's the valley. And both of these are actually creating each other and operating together to create the highs and lows that you can eventually uh, sort of reduce the amplitude up or the how, how much they go up and how much they go down so that they become and so that your emotions throughout the day are, are smoother and pleasant and at peace and not feeling like oh i want this or i need this and instead feeling fulfilled in the present moment now you have a lot of things going for you there's a lot of things that you could be grateful for and i'm not saying that from the perspective of oh you should be grateful for it or telling you to be grateful for it that's not what i'm saying What I am saying is that no matter who you are, whether you're a successful person in finance with a wife and the wonderful, wonderful things going for them, or a beggar on the street, life is full of, of wonder and, and miracles. And if we learn how to focus on that wonder and those miracles, on the beauty of life, we can train ourselves to. And over time, we can start to feel more fulfilled and grateful by just anything, you know, uh, looking at the tree in the wind, feeling the sun on our skin, a variety of things. So we can begin to feel grateful no matter where we are, no matter who's around us. And that's a skill that requires practice to cultivate. And you can cultivate that skill. And it can help you with your feelings of emptiness once you do. Second, I'm reading your post in my notes. So you say that the problem is that you can't continue forever. And you've tried to quit countless times, but never successful. Now I'd say that's not really a problem. That's not a problem that you've done math or that you've been dependent on it until now. 
or that you've tried to quit and haven't succeeded. It's an opportunity. You, you, you had a, a good run. You, you're doing well in your life overall. And there's just a change that you're looking to make. That change can lead to an even better life. So life, your life that's already good can become even better. That's an opportunity. If we zoom out on this time in your life where you've tried to quit multiple times, you've tried to quit, you've tried to quit, you've tried to quit, what you'll find is that you're actually on your way to quitting. These, these attempts don't, rep, these quote unquote failed attempts don't actually represent failure. They represent the beginning of your transcendence. And that's a wonderful thing. It's kind of like a stock chart. If you have a company that has a bad week, if you just look at that week, it looks like, oh my gosh, this company is going to tank. It looks bearish. Then if you zoom out over the past five years, you might find if, and you look at the chart over five years time, you see that that little dip that week is nothing compared to the positive trajectory that that company has been on over those five years. And so if you look at your process of quitting as, as in the past four years, as the beginning of your process of truly transcending this, you'll know that those relapses, those times where you get back into it, those times where you try to quit and you don't, those are just little fluctuations in the chart. And the overall trajectory of the chart says, yes, I am going to transcend this addiction. Yes, I will have the life I want. Yes, I will consciously choose how I live my life. That's the path that you're on. Realizing that right now you are in the process of quitting and that you will be successful is very important. It's important because it's true. And it's important because recognizing this truth will allow you to succeed. There's no point in ignoring that truth. As for hating yourself for such gross lack of determination, you're definitely not lacking determination. If you look at your life, you can see that you've accomplished many things. You have a, a great career and you have a great regimen and great discipline, even in your, you, in, in your, in your habits of, of drug using, you, you're very determined with the meals that you eat and how you, how you try to balance everything out and make it function. That reflects a lot of determination. Sometimes certain things are just more difficult for certain people. And that's not a reflection of that person being weak or anything like that. It's a reflection of their relationship to whatever the experience that they're having in their life is. And, and, and that relationship is unique to every individual. So this is just your path. What has happened up until this point has just been your path. It's not a reflection of a lack of determination. It's just a part of your individual process of growth and learning in this lifetime. And that's a beautiful thing. And it's not something to judge yourself about, to hate yourself for, or anything like that. Oftentimes when we feel that way about ourselves, when we have that self-judgment and even self-hatred, it can kind of suck the life out of our capacity to enjoy other things in our lives. And then we might end up feeling, like you described, empty or bored or unfulfilled. When you release that self-judgment and self, that self-hatred, that feeling of emptiness about your life, it can go away. You can start to find rich fulfillment in your life, rich meaning and purpose, and you can feel energized and excited and, and enriched by the things in your life, even the simple things, a fruit or a drive to work or a walk or just laying in bed or hanging out. That emptiness is not a problem and it can be transcended. In regards to the zero drug policy in your country and prospect of jail time, that's not really an obstacle, unless you want it to be. The reason why that's not an obstacle is because there's many ways to get help. If you're functioning right now, if you're functioning right now, you can start to wean yourself off. You can take less. You say you smoke morning and night. Well, smoke a little less in the morning. Smoke a little less at night then smoke a little less, and then a little less. Then maybe only smoke in the morning, or maybe only smoke at night, if that works for you. 
just like you've designed your process of being a functioning addict, you can design your process of transcending the addiction. You can just design your process of weaning off of the substance. And you can make it so that it's not difficult. You can make it, so, well, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you can make it so that it's not terrible. A lot of people try to quit cold turkey. Well, you're in a position in your life right now where there's not really a knife to your to your back or a gun to your head. You, you, your health is okay. Your job is okay. Your relationship's okay. You have the gift of time in regards to weaning off of this. And you can, with great discipline, start to wean off and eventually stop altogether. Now, if you're going on vacation in a month and you're planning on just going cold turkey, I'd recommend using this month to really start weaning off. And please remember that this is not medical advice of any kind. Please consult a, a, a doctor or a detox specialist about this and if you choose to. In regards to not being able to go to uh, a rehab because you could be found out uh, or, and, and get in trouble because of where you are, and because, of course, you probably don't want your company to know that stuff is going on, well, you can work one-on-one -on -one with a, a life coach or a therapist that is able to work over the phone. There's plenty of therapists in the United States, in, in the UK, uh, all over the world that can help you over the phone and be a facilitator for you in this process to help you understand why you're you're using why you feel the way you feel when you don't use what is creating the craving uh, what internal beliefs and fears and anxieties are, are creating the tendency to use and, and what's sort of keeping the tendency in place and that, that those discussions with that person can be weekly or, or bi-weekly or however often you want to do it and it can be completely confidential not even your wife needs to know that that's what you're working on and this person can help you work through the addiction and you can get this similar help that you might get if you were to go to rehab and, and where they offer therapy as well yeah i think that's pretty much it i hope that you find this helpful just a quick re a quick recap you can do this You've shown great determination and discipline and focus and energy and, 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 and motivation in many areas of your life. Applying those attributes and, and skills and that energy to anything will allow you to be successful, whatever it is. So I know you can do this. Getting help is very important in this process of achieving this. It's very hard to do this alone. The, the Buddha said something to the effect of, you know, in, in order to reach enlightenment, it's pretty much necessary to have a guru of some sort or another. And I think that the same applies in, in addiction. In order to transcend an addiction, which is in a way a process of enlightenment, at least it's a step on that ladder, having a, a facilitator is very, very, very uh, instrumental. In regards to feeling empty and bored, that is likely one of the contributing factors to your dependency on the drug. If you feel empty and bored, and then when you take the drug, you, you don't feel that way anymore, well, it can be nice to, to feel that elation, that high, that pleasure from the drug. If you can resolve your feelings of, of emptiness and boredom, then there won't be anything that you'll need to treat with the drug. And so getting to the root cause of those feelings, why you feel that way, what perspectives are driving that, what different misinterpretations of yourself and your life are driving that, can really help you untangle that knot that's creating that feeling of emptiness.